So how does this work? Do I need to call Hollywood or does Hollywood call me? Because this dress has me feeling like a bag of money, like literally a bag of money. You know the kind of money that you just go on your yacht, you have your own private sailor, glass of champagne, not like we can do any of that now because we're in a pandemic, but I mean, listen, nobody can tell me anything in this dress. <laughs> What's up Divas, and welcome back to the channel this week. I am back with another spicy tutorial. I ended up making this dress I have on here, which is this chocolate brown velvet bodycon cow neckline dress that has a strappy shoulder strap which crisscrosses at the back. I've actually been wanting to do like this crisscross fitted silhouette for a while now. So when I put up a poll earlier this month asking you guys what you wanted to see and you voted a cow neckline dress, I was like, yo. I need to make it happen so I'm going to be showing you guys how I created the pattern how I cut the dress and how I stitched everything up together make sure to watch up until the very end <laughs> so you understand how the full creative process works if you do enjoy this video make sure to give it a thumbs up share it with your sewing community or with anyone who you feel will find it useful and without further ado let's get straight into this I'm going to be working with the following measurements to create the patterns for this dress which I'm going to use to cut and sew the dress later on and they are all here on the screen. I recommend working with your measurement or that of your client for the best outcome. I have a separate video where I showed how to take your own measurements if you don't know how that works. So I'm going to be starting off with creating the sewing patterns because that's how I like to design garments and make the flat patterns first. And I'm starting off here with drawing a long vertical line which is going to become my center front line like so and then along this line starting from the top i'm going to be marking six inches downwards i'm going to square that point across like this and that is going to become my upper chest line so i'm just going in to mark half of my upper chest measurement along this line like so and then from my shoulder point i am marking 10 inches downward and that's going to become my bust line so i'm going in to square that line across like this and along this line i'm going to mark a quarter of my bust line measurement minus one inch because the fabric i intend to use has stretch so just keep that in mind if you're going to be recreating this project next up i'm marking roughly six inches below my bust line and that's going to become my waistline and i am just squaring that across like so and then i'm going to go in and mark a quarter of my waist measurements minus one inch like we did with the bust line after that i'm going to go ahead and mark 10 inches below my waistline and that is going to become my hip point i'm going in to square that point across like this and then i'm marking a quarter of my hip measurement minus one inch and then i'm going to move downwards to mark my dress length so i want a midi length so i'm going for 40 inches so it's like below my knee and then i can create that sort of like fitted body called a silhouette i'm just going in here to draw in my dress hemline and then the dress width is eight inches so it tapers in as the dress goes downwards towards the hem so next up i'm just going in here to connect my points together first off i'm joining that upper chest point to my bust line so i have my front arm curved and i'm drawing in my side seam connecting my waist to my hip point and then the hip point to the dress hem so i have a full side seam for my front dress pattern So this is what the front of my dress pattern looks like. If you're happy with the outcome so far, you can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is to create the cow neckline effect that this dress has and sort of makes it special. So I'm going to go in and draw in lines that are roughly two centimeters or one inch apart, and I'm going to be slashing and spreading this line. By slashing and spreading them, I am adding volume to the neckline of the dress, which creates the waterfall or the sloppy effect that cow necklines have. So I'm just going in here to cut in the lines like so. 
you can make yours smaller or bigger but just know the more you spread them the more fold or ripples or cowling the dress is going to have on the front so i'm just going in here to add another piece of pattern paper underneath my front dress plan and we're going to be spreading the panels by roughly one inch starting from the bottom one upwards i always like to start from the bottom upwards when i'm spreading uh, patterns like these so as i spread i tape down the panels to the paper i've placed underneath to just prevent it from moving around and then i have that filled up i know once i cut it out i have that intact and in place so after slashing and spreading all of my panels i'm going to go back in and extend my center front line upwards like this and then i'm going to connect the top of that upper chest line to my extension the next thing i'm going to do is extend that line upwards by two inches so this is the part that folds inward and you don't have a rough edge or you don't have to create a seam for the front neckline so i'm just going in here to extend upwards and connect to the front of the neckline and this is what the plan is looking like next up i'm just adding a one centimeter seam allowance that would allow me to join the front of the dress to the back of the dress along the side along the arm or arm curve or wherever is necessary so after doing that i went ahead to cut out my front pattern and this is what it looks like so far i was a bit worried about that neckline i won't lie but i just kept faith and continued to work so next up i'm just going in here to trace off my back dress pattern so i'm tracing off the side seam the hemline the center front into the center back because it's essentially going to be the same along those points and then for the back neckline i want a deep curved back neckline like so so i'm just connecting it back to my side seam so i know my front and my back side seams match along those points don't forget to also add your annotations, grain line and notches to your back pattern before cutting it out. So these are what the patterns I ended up creating, the front dress, the back dress, as well as the strap for the shoulders. Now the strap is basically a rectangular pattern piece that is 21 inches long and it's about one and a half inches wide because I want a strap that is on the slimmer side. So with that, you have all of your pattern pieces complete and you can go ahead to add make a twirl or cut onto your main fabric like i'm going to be doing in this tutorial so i'm working with this stretch gorgeous chocolate brown velvet i saw this in the store and i fell in love and i knew i wanted to, to, to use it for a fitted style dress so i'm going to be using that for this project so i went ahead to pin down all of my pattern pieces i'm cutting out my front i cut out my straps as well as my back pattern pieces as well i cut my front and back on a fold so i don't have to think about fastening or zips anywhere thankfully the fabric has stretched so i know i'll be able to get in and out of the dress so this is what my front dress looks like i have just one piece for the front i also went ahead to cut my straps i cut two one for each side of the shoulder and i'm going to be crisscrossing the straps on the back because i've never really done that for any dress that i've made i also went ahead to cut my back piece which i cut on a fold as well so i only have one piece of my back and with that we can go ahead and join all of these together to create the dress now with joining the dress the first thing i did was i I stitched up the side seams using a French seam technique so essentially the way this works is you stitch with wrong sides together on a 0.5 seam allowance a really narrow seam allowance and after doing that you basically turn your dress or your garment inside out and then you put right sides together and then you sew again i've been enjoying this technique recently because once i do this i don't have to overlock i don't have to use a bias tape and the garment looks and feels good on the inside so i did this for the left and for the right hand side and this is what the dress is looking like it's looking rather nice and tidy even though this is the inside of the dress so the next thing i decided to do was to fold over that extension that i created on the pattern like so and use that to actually finish off the arm curve that was not my intention initially but i decided to do it this way because i didn't want to have to fold and sew the front arm curve and i wasn't sure how how we finish the edge of the extension so after doing that for the left and for the right hand side i folded and stitched down the back neckline of the dress 
And if you are sewing velvet and you have a walking foot, please use it because the fabric is so slippery. It has stretch and it can be a bit tricky to sew. So I would say use a walking foot if you have one and be patient with yourself and with sewing this material because damn oh my god it is actually very tricky so after folding and sewing the back neckline thankfully it turned out really nice and really neat uh, this is what it looks like i didn't press anything directly with my iron because i was afraid of the fabric burning so i just kept all the steaming till the end when i was done so this is what the front and the back neckline is looking like and i'm going to go ahead and work on the straps the first thing I'm going to be doing with the straps is to put right sides together and essentially stitch the open ends to create a tunnel. That tunnel I'm going to turn inside out to create the shoulder straps. This I'll need to do for the left and for the right strap and I'm going to be using one of my hacks that I shared from my previous tutorial which is essentially where you attach a safety pin to a ribbon and then pass the safety pin ribbon combo through your tunnel until you arrive at the other end. And when you arrive at the other end, you remove your safety pin and then you stitch down the ribbon to that side. Once you've stitched it down like that and you pull the ribbon out from the other side that is still open, it forces your tunnel to go inside out. This has been my go-to method for straps and any narrow tunnels that I've wanted to create in recent time. Just go back and cut off the ribbon on this end so you have it loose and ready to be attached to your garment. So after doing this for the other strap, to ensure I had the strap placed on the right point on the back neckline, I made a point on my pattern and then just transferred that point onto the back neckline on the left and on the right hand side before going in to pin down my strap along the back neckline. And then for the front, what I did was I made made a tiny incision along the front neckline very close to the corner like so just be careful when doing this because you don't want to make an opening too wide i just made a tiny opening there passed my strap through pulled it out a little bit and when you're doing this make sure not to rotate your strap in such a way that it's like bulky and folds in a way that looks wrong or off so I did this for the left and for the right hand side and I'm just going in to stitch down my straps so I have them nicely secured. Because this piece has stretched, I knew that even if it was a bit tight, I would still have a situation whereby it wouldn't snap because the fabric has some stretch in it. So after stitching down the straps for the left and for the right hand side, making sure ensuring I did that crisscross detail at the back, I went back into the dress to finish off the hemline now for the hemline i essentially just folded it twice by a centimeter and then just stitched it down all the way across and when i was doing doing that i actually tried on the dress to check if i liked the fit and to check for any errors now the fit was beautiful i love the fit of this dress but immediately i couldn't i could tell that i didn't like the straps it's just a thing of personal preference um i went ahead to make a slightly slimmer strap and swapped it out for the straps that i initially did in this video the second thing that i would say i would correct for next time is when i was making the pattern for the front when i did the slashing and the spreading and the extending upwards i would go back in and square it down instead of having a pointed edge now on the dress it doesn't really show and it doesn't really matter because that is on the inside except if it doesn't bother you you can just leave yours like that but besides those two fixes and changes, everything about this dress actually fits really nicely. You can decide to go for a longer or a shorter length if you want to make changes to yours. You can even add a slit on the side. You can be playful with how deep that back neckline even goes if you want to show a bit of skin. But besides that, it turned out really, really nice. And it's a piece I would surely wear when it's warm with sandals or on holiday when we can go on holiday. But if you guys enjoyed watching this video, do let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your sewing community or with anyone who you know would enjoy this tutorial. And until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon and evening wherever you are. Bye.